Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of our Community Access. This week we will visit with a young lady who has lupus and bring her service dog and trainer. Then we will show you part one of the fatal stage of grand opening of the Legacy 925 all today on our Community Access. Welcome back. The disease is called lupus and it hurts anywhere in their body. Today we have brought Ginger and her service dog and their trainer. That will tell us about important for Ginger has to have a service dog. With the story of reporter Rachel Baker. Rachel? Rachel Baker and I've had the lovely opportunity to meet with Ginger Gwinden and Vicki Dreyer. Ginger, I understand that you have di you've been diagnosed with lupus. Can you tell the yeah. audience what lupus is yes. and what it, how it impacts your life? Yes, lupus is a genetic disorder in our family. It's hereditary. It's never skipped a generation. So it has hit all of the women in our family. Um, lupus attacks your muscles and your organs. Lupus thinks that everything in your body is a foreign body. So it will travel around um, kind of like when you get a cold, you produce antibodies to kill the virus. Um, my body produces T cells and B cells that start killing the organs. And that creates inflammation yes. and a lot of, um, what does that mean for you when you're living life? Does it, does it give you pain? Oh yes, I'm in a lot of pain. My joints hurt, um, I have seizure activity. It has attacked my heart, uh, my wow. spleen, my kidneys, uh, several other organs. And, um, and you know, and it's, it's even attacked my eyes. Wow, when were you so, diagnosed with lupus? 1987. Wow. Yes, and they gave me 10 to 15 years in 1987. Well, you've beaten that. So I have. <laughs> I've, I've made goals. Every year I make a goal, and and uh, so yeah. I That's, never thought I'd have a grandbaby, and I got to see the grandbaby, so. <laughs> and it's truly a beautiful life. Yes. Um, and this is your sister, Vicki My sister, Vicki. Hi. And you are the dog trainer? Yep, I am the dog trainer. OPA. That's what I do every day. All right. OPA. Um, what have you done to train Leica here? Um, well, Leica has started our program like any other dog with basic obedience. And through that journey of basic obedience, we kind of get a feel of what the dog's task could be or what they're going to be best at. Um, for the company I work for, we train dogs for all different things, such as pet obedience, police dog work, sport work, service dogs. Um, all different kinds of things. And every dog starts off with the basic obedience, the foundation. And then from there, we learn the dog's personality and as they mature, what they're best for. Originally, my plan for like it was going to be my own personal sport dog to compete in a sport called IPO, um, which is a lot of like um, obedience and like police dog activity. But through it, she kind of showed me that it wasn't what she wanted to do. Um, so we kind of geared her towards basically companion and service dog work and about that time my sister had her needs had changed and her doctor had said that you know you may benefit from having a service dog to assist you in some daily activities and I thought why not train this dog for her and donate it to her and so we started working with that and about four months ago like was at a point in her training where she was in public, she was doing things with grocery shopping, restaurants, all those things, and Ginger came and visited us in Florida and worked with Leica for about 10 days. They bonded at that point, and the dog actually worked much better for her. I think that in this situation, dogs sense who needs me more kind of thing. Um, and it, it, it worked, and from then on, we've kind of finessed her training, and here we are today. I drove her here all the way from Florida it's a long trip. Yep, and um, so we're starting again. This week we're doing a lot of training to kind of connect them again. 
That's um, but really it's almost like, like I didn't forget who needed her most. When did you decide, Ginger, when that, that you wanted, that you th thought that a service dog would help you? Actually, I was, I'm one of those people where I don't need it. I don't, you know, I can do this, I can, I've got it. And I always tell people, I have lupus that doesn't have me. So when Vicki called and said, you know, I think I'm going to train her and she's going to be your service dog. I bawled. I bawled like a baby. <laughs> I just, and I cry, and I still get emotional because what a gift. What a yeah, gift. Truly. I, you know, when, when I found out and I was able to go down and work with her, I just was, I didn't want to leave. I cried when I left. <laughs> so um, it is a great help. Even yesterday, um, there's a handle on her vest and I was going up the steps to get in the house and I just grabbed the handle and she helped me right up the steps. And I'm, I'm like, oh, you know, I didn't think I needed it, oh. <laughs> but it works. <laughs> that, that's really great. So she helps you with, like, cause it helps you deal with the pain that you go through, the physical pain yes. that will keep you from doing normal things. What other things do you struggle with it? Like I can help you with. She can carry grocery bags. Um, she can, uh, she'll be able to eventually sense when my heart rate, I have a loop recorder, um, so I'm wireless all the time. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Every night I'm wireless and it transmits to the doctor's office, wow. but um, eventually she'll be able to, to sense my seizure activity. She'll be able to sense uh, when my heart rate is, is, you know, and then dogs, they have that calming effect. Absolutely. So, and we will be training her to, um, if I was to go down with a seizure, to, to put herself between my head and the floor to keep you from mm -hmm. injuring yourself. Yes. That's really remarkable that you are able to train her to do that. How long does it take to teach a dog to, to bond with a human that way? The bonding um, happens through the training. Basically, Laika has gone through some training and we speak what we call a particular language to the dogs. And it's just how we speak to them, how we correct, how we reward. And Ginger learned the language back in November. so. It's almost, like I said, it's almost immediately that the dog feels that she needs her. She has a want to be with the dog and a want to connect with the dog, and the dog almost automatically connects. Within four to six hours of me being in the home, um, the dog was already was staying with her. I would leave the room. She didn't care. And her training, she's been in training already about a year and a half, but training never stops. When you have a dog that has a job to do, they're working all the time. And it's kind of like what we call practice for physicians. If they learned and got their degree but never practiced what they learned, then they wouldn't be any good. Exactly. Okay. She is always practicing, always practicing the skills she learns. And through the bonding with Ginger, she'll continue to get even better. And there will be milestones or benchmarks that we'll get at to where Ginger's needs will change and we'll work with Laika and kind of mold her into that. I see. How would you train a dog to react to seizures and be able to protect Ginger? Well, that bond will have to happen first, and it, it has already started. And um, it's very unique. It's like they sense yeah. it. And they do sense it. Yeah. And right now, there's no guarantee that she has the personality to do that difficult task, but time will tell. Right. And right now, everything we've given her, she's done and said, give me more. It truly sounds like she does have the potential. Yeah, we hope so. What other dogs have you trained in the past? Um, I've trained my personal dog for, he's basically like my resume. Um, mm -hmm. He does everything from obedience to personal protection and scent work. He is learning to detect um, the scents that people use things to make bombs. So he's a bomb wow. detection dog as well. <laughs> he's not certified yet, but I hope to be at that point. Um, and uh, we do a lot of pet obedience and behavior help, helping people get through ups and downs with their pets and through different stages of development. Um, as well as many different service dogs. Right now we are starting to work with a Mastiff, which is a very large dog, wow. as a service dog for um, a young child that has um, multiple brain surgeries and some mobility issues. And right now they've spent a month together bonding in the home, and the dog will begin his training when I get back on the 1st of April. Very cool. I wanted to ask you, Ginger, a little bit more about the disease. Um, are there, how common is lupus? How, do you have a community? Lupus, yes. There's a, there are, there's a large community. Um, a lot of people don't know about lupus. They'll say, well, what is lupus? You know, I've never heard of it. But yet there's a lot of people that have it. Um, mainly uh, Native American, um, African American, and Hispanics, it's very prevalent in. Um, I do have some Native American in me. 
however, I'm mostly Irish and German, but it still decided to pick us. I think it picked us because we're the strong ones. We're the ones that could be the advocates, because right. I always say, I'm going to be the one that's going to break the chain. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but it does uh, affect nine out of ten, it's women. Mm. So, uh, like when I had my son, they said we will not test him until he's 13 and only if he's showing signs. And now my granddaughter, she's five and she's already uh, has symptoms. She's already seeing a cardiologist wow. and a rheumatologist. So, and her test came back positive. That's unfortunately. really strong uh, yes. genetic yes. transfer. Yeah. Wow. So it does, um, there are a lot of people, there's the uh, U of M has a wonderful, they're like the, the best lupus research. And when you donate to their lupus research, every penny gets used in the research at U of M. And they have what's called an Amster Lupus Fund. And it's, it's the only place that I will donate to. We used to do butterfly walks and um, unfortunately Herb Amster passed away and uh, he still lives on through his dowry and his fund at U of M. But we always ask, I always tell people, if you want to donate, please donate to U of M. That's really fantastic. Where is the research <clears throat> now? How close are they to a cure? Do you know? They don't. Um, there's not even a medicine yet. Uh, we have medicines that help maintain your symptoms. Right. And one medicine, which is Plaquenil, slows the progression but it's not a cure. They just came out with Benlista, which is extremely expensive. It's like $15,000 a year. Oh goodness. So a lot of insurances are not covering it. So people like me, we can't, I can't get it because I can't afford it. Of course, yeah. So, um, but I'm doing well on, on the Plaquenil, which is the staple, you have to be on Plaquenil. And um, you, they just monitor you. And we're hoping that in the near future, they're getting closer. They are right. getting closer. Uh, they did a huge research through um, 23andMe, and we sent in our, they asked all these lupus patients to send in, they gave us a free DNA kit, like what Ancestry.com does. Right. So they gave us a free DNA kit, we sent it in, and it's amazing the research that comes out of there. Because I mean, they're taking all of these lupus patients and they're comparing all of their DNA so they're getting That's close. really great material. Yes, they're getting close. You know, when you said that um, they have an ideas for the research, it reminds me a lot of Alzheimer's actually, which runs in my family, and I've done some research on that. I wrote a paper about it, and the immune immunity, it, it works the same way, mm -hmm. how the immune system mm -hmm. attacks in the brain. Mm -hmm. And it's really a fascinating thing, the way the body works, mm -hmm. and that your body would have a, gen um, a genetic factor that would allow it to attack itself. That's really hard to deal with. Yes. And you're very strong to have lived, I mean, outlived all the <laughs> years that your doctor said that you yeah. would. You're truly a walking example of being able to push through and being strong with that. I'm a very a positive and strong person, yes. <laughs> How has that impacted your philosophy in life? Um, I look at everything as I woke up today. That's <laughs> what I say. I woke up today. What am I going to do today? Right. And because I woke up today, today is an, another day. Um, I go to bed and I say, you know, tomorrow's another day and, and we'll plan it then. So I don't, I don't plan things in advance. It's hard because if someone asks me, well, can you, you know, blah, 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 down the road, uh, you know, it's hard because I don't know. I can have a bad day in a few hours. Right. I can have a bad day two days from now. I can have a bad week. You know, I can mm -hmm. have a bad month. Right. So for me to say yes and commit to something is very hard. I very understand hard. that. And that's very hard on me because I feel for like sure. I'm letting Obligated. people down. Mm -hmm. Of course. How often does your lupus flare up? Uh, stress will flare it. Um, injuries will flare it. Mm. <laughs> I hurt my knee the other day. Oh, goodness. Uh, so um, <laughs> even... Um, just overrunning yourself will do it. So it, well, it's, you really do have to keep yourself pretty. I have to. Yes, I'm supposed compressed. to take a nap every day, and it's like no, I don't have time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you work from home, or how does that? How um, does that work I out? have a uh, a hobby company, sort of. That's really nice. It's Lysina Naturals, and I do all natural soaps and uh, body products. 
and That's they're really all available nice. in, in like some of the stores downtown and uh, a couple out of state so it's just you know it's a small little thing I have a commercial shop in my basement and it's nice because if if I'm not feeling well I don't have to do it right that and is that's it's really great yeah. and I'm sure Leica is going to be able to really help you oh yes yes <laughs> maybe she can help you develop and my sister she shampoo. just works <laughs> yeah <laughs> she's amazing I can't I <laughs> my sister is I it, it looks like you have a great she really is stuff. amazing she is to me she's so strong and see now I see her that way not at all see her and my mother are the strong ones I'm the one that if when they're sick and they're in the hospital my mom's like take her home because she's emotional yeah. me she's strong so no I could and I say this I'm very fortunate that lupus skipped me and I say this all the time I could I think that happened for a reason because somebody knew that I wasn't strong enough to deal with that and what she goes through I say I don't know if I could do it I don't know how I could do it you know I, I couldn't and so yeah, maybe I'm amazing in, in her eyes, but she's amazing to me. That, because that's there's, yeah, I could never, I, I don't think I could be as strong as she is and do what she's had to do. It truly is inspirational. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of mental fortitude to do what you do and just live every day positively. Yeah, I try to. And it really seems like you both um, use each other for a support system. We're very close. Really great. Yeah. We are very yeah, close. Absolutely. And when I went to Florida and I went to the uh, facility where the training takes place and just watching them work with all of these dogs and thinking, oh my gosh, you know, it's 90 degrees and they're, you know, <laughs> yeah. in this pole barn and, and, <laughs> and, and, and they're doing it. And, you know, it was yeah. great. It was really, really fascinating. And, and Lupo, I can't say enough about Lupo Canine. They're wonderful. That's, that's where she trains the dogs. Um, and then um, she also has... Uh, pet transportation business so she how transports you, wow how far do you travel well I try to do a lot of local things within Central Florida um, but I get a lot of requests for things out of state and just making this personal trip here to Michigan um, and then I'm going to go over to visit another friend in Oklahoma I've picked up several transportation jobs just because I put it out there on my page that I'd be out and people are calling Wow um, right now with with just a lot of negativity and, and, and things that happen with pets in airports or, or airlines shipping them. Mm -hmm. It's become a caution area for people that have to ship animals. Oh, for sure. So ground transportation has really taken off. So for me to start my business um, last spring as a pet transportation business was really timing was good. Things happened yeah, for a reason. And now all of a sudden I'm getting a lot of calls. When you were talking about pet transportation, that's immediately where my mind went because I know my, um, my parents lived in Japan for a short amount of time. And they said, we cannot have a dog if we're going from the U S to mm -hmm. Japan. Mm -hmm. And that's just too long of a flight for a dog. And um, they told us when we got a dog, we would not be flying. Or we would not fly with this dog. We would always, wherever we went, we'd drive in the car with the dog. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, it truly is a lovely thing that you're doing mm -hmm. for so many people. So it's truly a sought after business that you have. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually, I'm, I'm very lucky to um, be doing what I love to do and kind of living a dream. I worked for uh, most of 30 years as a veterinary technician and a manager um, through veterinary hospitals and animal shelters and in the spring I changed gears and went to work for my friend's business Lupo Canine Services as a full-time dog trainer. I've always trained dogs but it's always been kind of a secondary thing that I did for personal reasons or for other people. Right. And working as a dog trainer every day is extremely fulfilling and then having the flexibility of working for my best friend and having my own business to come and go and do pet transportations as well wow. has been very rewarding and because of that situation I've been able to take off for a couple of weeks to come here and work with Ginger and get her settled in with Laika mm -hmm. and get them bonded as a team and, and a working team. All right well thank you so much both of you for thank coming you. and talking to us. You're very welcome. Us. Thank you for having thank you. us. All yes. Right. <laughs> it was nice. A great story. Next up, we show you part one of the grand opening of the Legacy 925 in Oxford with our reporters Terry Stiles and Rachel Baker. Ladies. Hi, 
Hi, Bill. I've been in this building more than a dozen times in the last year, and it changes every time I come in here. I'm with Kristen Mills of Legacy 925 now, right? Yes. And so what's going on today? Kristen, it looks so different in here. What have you added in the last couple of months? Well, uh, today is our grand opening of uh, the new section of Legacy 925, which is our go-kart track. We have a bowling alley, mini bowling. Uh, we've just added um, archery tag and bowling uh, to the den. as well. So we have a great lineup tonight of live music. Uh, we've included a magician. We have a uh, Anthony Grappito. We have a blessing from the River Church. We have the Lake Gorian Percussion Group coming in and uh, Rome and then live music from 9 to 12. So, so let's talk a little bit about the event center because I've talked to a couple different people and they're confused about what it is and I don't want to relay the wrong thing. It look, you're talking about towards where the restaurant's at, right? That's correct. So the event center holds about 500 people and there's a stage. We have kind of Las Vegas style lighting and a DJ booth. And it's really designed to be kind of a, a cornerstone in the community for events. So we'll do everything from graduations to live music, uh, teen nights. Uh, we'll rent it out for uh, graduation parties, weddings, um, corporate events. So anything that you can put a gathering together of 500 people or less, you know, uh, we intend to be the, the main location for Oakland County. And so if Pete, somebody wanted to do that, bring, say, their relatives from across the country in here and I'll hang out, they have access to the entire Legacy Center? Or how will that work for them? Yeah, the event center will have times that it's open to the public. So we'll have live music playing and you know, we'll have our food truck up and running. Our bar and food truck are coming in the next, you know, four to eight weeks. Um, but so once that's open, then there'll always be live music and we'll sell tickets uh, to the event center or you can rent it out. And then there's probably five or six different rooms that you can rent for people less than, you know, 50. You have something smaller available Is there for like birthday parties and kids parties? So, you know, Urban Air, Laser Tag, the Arcade, Go-Karts, you know, we do a ton of kids' birthday parties. It's the best place in Oakland County to come mm, I agree. Uh, to enjoy a, a family birthday. Uh, but we also have five or six areas where you can come as just a group or a corporate event. So we have like a beautiful lounge area and our mini bowling room, which is a dedication to Sea Ray. You can hold 50 people. Uh, and then what we have, our chill room, which has a small stage, is kind of real low lighting and a little bit gritty. Um, so there's lots of places for people to come and, and gather as well. And I will say, you just got approval for your Class C liquor license, correct? Yes, I did. Congratulations. <laughs> Quite a battle. It's been a long road for you, I know it has, but we are really excited that you finally, this is your final phase, right? It is. We have, what you see in front of us is the last space available. Uh, so we have about 3,000 square feet available to rent. And uh, we're not sure what to do with it yet, but it is, our, it is our final phase. Do you have any hopes for what might come in here? Yeah, in my vision for the center mm -hmm. to kind of complete it, you know, one of the things that there's actually three things. One, we'd love to have a music school here, or a theater, or a place that we can do childcare drop-off. So oh, if nice. anyone is interested in developing that kind of business as a partnership with us, you know, please contact us. You have several people that people can contact. Let's talk about this behind us. Uh, the go-kart track is amazing. Yes. You know, we're one of the few in this area, actually we're the only one in this area that has an elevated go-kart track. So all the turns and curves and bringing up over the bridge makes it really a dynamic track to drive. Uh, we have four different speeds, so young children can drive safe. We can do tandem carts, uh, and then we have a pro speed. And the last speed is a club speed, which we haven't kind of unleashed yet. You know, that'll be for teams and clubs after they've proven that they're not going to run into the wall and hurt themselves. 
but it's a really fast track, it's exciting, and it's safe. Oh, and it looks so fun. I've already watched a couple kids go through there, and they've got a grin on their face and no bugs because it's inside. And no bugs, yeah, <laughs> and their teeth. And so we also saw a bunch of people camping out. What was that all about today? So we have a grand promotion today where the first 500 people in the door, uh, they get, there's 125 free jump passes for a year, 125 go-kart rides for the year. Oh uh, there's 125 passes that offer bowling and another 125 passes that's unlimited go, uh, laser tag for the year. Um, and then all of our tenants are also participating. So they all have giveaways. So we have a map of all the tenants who are, you know, uh, promoting their particular services. And then there's a grand giveaway in the event center uh, later on tonight. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry if you're not here, you're missing it. It's exciting here. It's nothing we've ever seen in this community it's it's just fantastic to see this christian thank you, thank you for doing this i can't say enough welcome to the community again thank you so much it's always a pleasure speaking with you and you and your team have been a great advocate for the legacy center so it's greatly appreciated thank you you'll see us again Didi and John Luckel at this restaurant newly opening at the Legacy Center. Can you tell me a bit about what you know about the restaurant or the owners? I know the owners are Christian Mills and Mike, I don't know his last name, I'm sorry, Link I think. Um, they have went to partner together for this Legacy Center and it's been an awesome beginnings here. The restaurant should be opening soon. Our event center is going to be opening soon and they're going to have all kinds of great foods. Passport Pizza I believe is going to be our caterer. So we have a lot of things planned for the future here. We have some weddings we're going to be booking and some entertainment we're going to be booking. It's going to be a great place to come and have fun. Oh, well, there you have it. I mean, it sounds really exciting. It is. It's very exciting. We've been waiting for this for a long time, watching it be built and watching all the different stages, and now it's here. So it's like very, very exciting. The artwork is absolutely beautiful, the aesthetic in the place. It is beautiful. We have an artist, Christy, and she does all our painting in, in the event center. You'll see Kid Rock on the wall and Madonna on the wall, and she's fabulous. She's done all the artwork on the outside of the building also. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. Come out to this restaurant and Legacy Center. It's really cool. Yes, it is. Is. Come on down. All right. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. What a huge and fun building. The grand opening of the Legacy 925. Next week, we'll show you part two of more of the grand opening of the Legacy 925. Well, that's all the time for this week. We hope you enjoyed our program. So please look at the credits to see the incredible reporters and photographers and editors from Oxford Community Television. I'm Bill Service, and you have a great, great weekend. <laughs>